Hi everybody, it's the History Teacher. This episode examines the life of Adolf Hitler. As unpalatable as it may be, if we want to understand the 20th century and beyond, then we have to know something about Hitler. The most notorious leader in Germany was an Austrian. Hitler was born in the small town of Braunau on the Inn River in Austria on April 20th, 1889. His father, named Alois, was a mid-level civil servant for the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, who was stern and often abusive to his wife and children. His mother, Clara, whom he adored, was soft-spoken and kind. The family moved to Germany when Hitler was three. Alois wanted Hitler to become a civil servant like he was, a somewhat prestigious job with a steady paycheck. But Adolf wanted to become an artist. Hitler and his father's different goals led to vicious arguments. Alois died in 1903 when Hitler was 14, and his mother permitted Hitler to pursue his artistic aspirations. Hitler moved to Vienna and twice applied to the renowned Academy of Fine Arts, but was rejected both times. In 1907, Hitler's mother died. For a time, Hitler was supported by an orphan's pension. After it ran out, Hitler became homeless and penniless. He slept in a men's shelter at night and painted and tried to sell watercolor postcards by day. He lived at the edge of poverty for six years. And it was during this period, in Vienna from 1907 to 1913, that Hitler's anti-Semitism developed. Anti-Semitic attitudes were not rare in Vienna, nor in Europe generally. When World War I erupted in August 1914, Hitler, age 25, enlisted in the German army. He volunteered for the dangerous assignment of courier, that is, carrying messages between different portions of the army. He was awarded the Iron Cross, first class for bravery, a very distinguished accomplishment. Near the end of the war, Hitler was temporarily blinded by a poison gas attack. He was in a hospital recovering when the war ended. Like many people who supported Germany, he was outraged by Germany's defeat in the war and incorrectly suspected that the allegedly premature German surrender had been orchestrated by Marxists and Jews. Like many Germans, he was disgusted by what was considered to be the unfair terms imposed on Germany by the Treaty of Versailles. After the war, Hitler remained in the German army and served as an intelligence officer. One assignment was to spy on a small political group, the German Workers' Party. The German Workers' Party was nationalist, anti-Semitic, and anti-communist, just like Hitler. So, in 1919, instead of continuing to spy on the party, Hitler joined it and resigned from the army. Hitler proved so influential that he became the new leader of the party in 1921. By that point, it had a new name, the National Socialist German Workers' Party. The term Nazi is an abbreviation for the German words for National Socialist. In November 1923, the Nazis, thousands strong and including brown-shirted stormtroopers, attempted an armed coup in Munich, seeking to take control of the German state of Bavaria. Munich authorities crushed the uprising in which 20 people died. This was the Beer Hall Putsch, so-called because the coup was announced in a Munich Beer Hall. Hitler was arrested and tried for treason, but the court was sympathetic to his cause and he served only a one-year imprisonment under comfortable conditions. He was released in December 1924. While there, Hitler dictated the book Mein Kampf, meaning My Struggle, in which he presented his racial philosophy and his nationalist ideas for Germany. In the years after Hitler left prison, Germany became prosperous and the Nazi Party's influence practically disappeared. Like other extremist groups, the Nazi Party thrived in periods of mass uncertainty, fear, and tension. The Great Depression, therefore, revived the Nazi Party's popularity. In 1932, Hitler ran for the German presidency against military hero Paul von Hindenburg. Hitler lost, but nevertheless gained 35% of the final vote, a significant number, which meant that Hitler couldn't be ignored. Hindenburg appointed Hitler as chancellor, that is, head of government, in January 1933. By installing Hitler into the government, traditional career politicians believed that they could then control Hitler and the Nazis. That proved to be a catastrophic miscalculation. Hitler used his platform as chancellor to steadily acquire more power. Within a month, the Reichstag building, where the German parliament convened, was suspiciously set on fire. Hitler exploited this, quote, emergency to suspend legal rights and to allow indefinite detention without trial. Hitler used these powers to eliminate the Nazis' critics and opponents. Within six months, Hitler had become virtually a dictator and all political parties were prohibited except the Nazis. German President Hindenburg died in August 1934. Hitler's government merged the offices of Chancellor and President so that now Hitler was the sole and effectively unlimited ruler of Germany. Hitler proceeded to make the goals outlined in Mein Kampf become a reality. Germany withdrew from the League of Nations, and Hitler ordered the German military to rapidly expand. Hitler was preparing for war. 
In 1935, the Nuremberg Laws were passed, which stated that Jews were no longer German citizens and which banned marriage between non-Jewish Germans and Jewish people. In seeking racial perfection, the Nazis began sterilizing or murdering children and later adults who had intellectual or physical disabilities. The Holocaust was an effort to eliminate people whom the Nazis believed were unworthy of life. From 1939 to 1945, Nazis were responsible for the deaths of about 13 million people, of which 6 million were Jewish. The others were gay people, Roma, that is, gypsies, political prisoners, Jehovah's Witnesses, and anyone else who didn't fit into the Nazis' racial and social ideal. After the horrors of the First World War, England, France, and other European nations wanted to avoid another conflict. Hitler took advantage of Europe's desire for peace to expand German territory. First Germany annexed Austria in March 1938, then a portion of Czechoslovakia, and then the rest of it in March 1939. England and France accommodated Hitler's ambitions rather than risk war. They traded other people's countries for Hitler's promises that he would stop enlarging the German Reich, but each promise was a lie. When Germany invaded Poland on September 1, 1939, the British and French finally realized that appeasing Hitler wouldn't guarantee peace, so they declared war on Germany. Most of Europe was in Hitler's grip when Allied forces landed in Normandy on June 6, 1944, D-Day. On July 20, 1944, a conspiracy of anti-Nazi German military officers tried to assassinate Hitler with a bomb. Remarkably, Hitler survived. The perpetrators were almost immediately apprehended, and the ringleaders were executed within 24 hours. A severe defeat at Stalingrad by the Russians and the momentum of Allied armies moving eastward from France eventually reversed Hitler's conquests. By April 1945, the Russian army had reached Berlin, and they were hunting for Hitler. Hitler, though, was in a fortified underground bunker, hiding. Rather than confront the full consequences of his actions, Hitler shot himself in the head. The night before, he buried his longtime mistress, Eva Braun, who would commit suicide along with him. Adolf Hitler confidently promised Germans a thousand-year Reich, but instead he delivered the Holocaust, and a war which utterly destroyed Germany and resulted in the deaths of some 50 million people around the world. Alright, that's it for now. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.